right. So, um, yeah, so quick introductions, right? So, um, Christian, my name is Christian Hernandez, um, again. So, I am um, a product manager at Red Hat. I'm also a maintainer of Open GitOps. So, um, if you see, you know, you see that QR code. Hello? There we go. If you see that QR code of, of getting involved, like if you want to ask someone directly, you can ask me. Um, um, you know, any questions about that as well. I'm also a contributor to the Argo, uh, Argo project. And uh, Nick, Nick's here. Hi, I'm Nick Schutz. I'm a field engineer at solo.io. Um, my specialty is in application networking. Um, previous to this, I was at Red Hat for quite a few years practicing Kubernetes and OpenShift, um, uh, helping enterprises all over the place. Uh, now I do that with application networking. Sweet, sweet. And uh, yeah, so take it away, talking about uh, service mesh. Um. So Istio. Um, Istio is an open source service mesh. Um, it's also a, a CNCF incubating project as of recently. Next slide. So the common service mesh functions are things like enforced MTLS, application resilience, uh, observability, uh, granular policy access and control. Um, those are just some things that you can allow via service mesh with people's applications without having them change their application at all easily. So one of the challenges behind uh, service or Istio as a service mesh is traditionally the deployment. Um, and it's fine if you wanna do a Istio deployment on a single cluster perhaps in multiple namespaces and use their low level uh, configurations to do so. Uh, but once you start getting into multi-cluster you start to get some challenges. Uh, things like uh, communication between uh, those clusters, uh, root trust between those clusters. And when that starts to happen, um, you know, what's missing and lacking is, you know, that MTLS between the clusters, like I was saying. Uh, an API that actually understands multi-cluster comprehensively uh, and something that people can consume at a higher level, a more comprehensive level. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that. All right. There you go. And that's where the Glue Mesh open source and enterprise product comes in. It allows for that abstraction at the multi-cluster layer. Uh, or for multi-cluster deployments um, to a point where it makes it very easy to consume and also everything is done via declarative uh, uh, configs via CRDs. And that makes it perfect for things like GitOps. Yeah, and um, like you said, um, since the, all these configurations to manage um, your service mesh are all just like, you know, um, CRDs, um, YAML, that sort of thing, right? It's all Kubernetes native. It makes like GitOps and Istio, uh, like I like to call it like peanut butter and chocolate, right? Um, goes better together, right? So as you can tell, I'm a big candy guy. It, um, uh, it just goes better together, right? And so if you are looking at your um, desired state, right? I'm gonna kind of use this um, term loosely. So if any security guys here are here, don't, don't get too mad at me, I'll, I'll get into that. But you can look at your desired state as almost like your policy, right? And when I, when I say policy, I don't necessarily mean security. Obviously that's gonna be a big part of it. Part of the larger picture is, um, is security. But what, what I'm talking about policy is like your organizational policies, right? Like if you're thinking about, um, for instance, um, I'm just gonna get really, really simple, like, like your corporate standard build of your, of your um, like Linux VMs, right? Or, or, your, um, or whatever server that, that you're setting up. Those are actually policies, right? You, you have a policy 
that you want to apply to a system. So, um, you know, bringing that back up to GitOps is that you can view that source of truth, right, that Git that you want to apply, that you don't want it to drift, as, as policy, right? And so that in kind of almost like a um, policy governor, almost, right? You're thinking more, now you're thinking like kind of like more, as you can tell, kind of like um, enterprise architect background, but like think about more of it being like a generic um, governance model of like how you manage your system, right? So it doesn't, policy doesn't necessarily mean security, right? I'm not talking about like policy with respect to like authorization and authentication, although that's a bigger part of it. I'm talking about it mean more like holistically about your systems, right? And um, Service Mesh is a powerful tool, right? And so as, as Nick was, was, was talking about, it's, 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 really, um, um, it's really there to help you scale and it's really, really powerful, but it gets really, really complex when you wanna do it massively at scale as trying to look at it at a single pane of glass, right? And so that's kind of like where GitOps comes into play where you kind of wanna like distribute that power and make sure you have that power and make sure you have ultimate control uh, um, across all your systems there. And so, which is why I kind of have that graphic is like GitOps and, and Istio, you know, you, you, um, they, they, work, they work pretty well together, right? And um, this is, um, and when you're managing a large systems, right? Um, you know, both, both Nick and I have like, you know, we, we've worked with really, really large uh, enterprises to try to like get some of this stuff out and observability becomes paramount. Very, um, it becomes um, really, especially with distributed systems, right? Especially with like really, really large uh, enterprises and you have, you know, thousands and thousands of applications across thousands and thousands of clusters. Um, you know, you get, you get data with that, with Service Mesh, right? And you get, um, you, you, you have to use that data. Now that you have that data, you know, the, um, you know, the, someone one, once, once said that, what's the difference between um, data and information? Right, and just information is just process data. Now that, you have, now that you have the data, now you need to have that, the information you need in order to do um, things like policy enforcement, right? And so I try to get a better graphic than this. I don't know if that makes sense, right? You have an infinite loop going between your configuration and your, your clusters, but the idea there is that um, your GitOps controller is kind of like your policy enforcer. Again, I'm kind of using these terms a little loosely because if there's any security guy there, it's like, well, it's not really enforcing any policy. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. But, um, but if you think about it, your GitOps controller, whether you're using Flux or Argo or you know, whatever, um, you, you, know, you kind of think of it as like, you know, I have this um, policy that I want to be able to deploy massively across my cluster, right? Like I want to be able to, um, and then what I mean policy, I kind of like am alluding to some of the, the, the Istio primitives um, of how to, um, you know, con uh, traffic controlling, right? And so um, where GitOps really comes into, uh, um, comes into, into play with respect to like power is that it's, it's preventing that policy from drifting, right? It's one thing to, and I'm kind of, um, I'm kind of, kind of skip bullet points right here. It's one thing to use things like Kyverno and, and, um, and OPA and, you know, other security aspects of it, right? Because like, you know, when you're using stuff like Kyverno or, uh, Kyverno or OPA, that's really more on the like traditional policy side aspect of it, where it's like you set something up and that controller is making sure that that is happening. However, there's nothing controlling if someone, if some bad actor, someone fat fingers a config, someone changes the Kyverno or OPA configuration on your cluster, now all of a sudden, it, it doesn't matter if you're running Kyverno, right? Like if, if someone's there changing the policy to something you don't want it to be, then you know, how good is that policy, right? And so you know, kind of jumping back up is like preventing that, that drift, right? You're gonna be using your GitOps controller to um, making sure that drift doesn't happen. You wanna set your policies and you wanna make sure that policy is always what you want it to be, right? And basically, also, you want to automate those policy changes, right? So if you ever change a policy, whether you um, put in a new a constraint or you know, you, maybe you widen it a little bit, um, you want that to automatically propagate massively to, to your entire cluster. And so um, another aspect of, of GitOps is 
what, what I really like about Istio and what I really like about Service Mesh is that it, um, it puts in things like progressive rollouts into, um, um, into, it codifies them, right? So there's a challenge with that. So I find that if um, things are dynamic in a service mesh world, right? Like I want, you know, you, you, um, you want to be able to do something like, uh, like canary deployments, right? I always talk about canary deployments. Um, those are really, really dynamic, right? You want to, you know, release a new version of your application. You want to release maybe some, like 10% of it. Okay, that's looking good. Maybe release another 10%, so now you're at 20%. Okay, that looks looking good. How does that look like in the GitOps world, right? Um, because is that a series of series of commits to a branch, right? And, you know, or a PR, you know, a bunch of, you know, commits to that branch, or if, if you're, you know, really running GitOps, a bunch of PRs and like every PR, someone has to look at that PR and merge it, right? And approving, you have to go through that approval process for every time you want to increase that canary, that canary is going to take forever. Um, and another way to do it is kind of ignore those differences, but then that kind of goes against the spirit of GetOps. You know, you really want to have like a policy around that, right? And so, um, so if your source of truth is static, how do you do like a dynamic rollout, right? Really like um, embrace the power of a service mesh, right? And a lot of controllers, um, a lot of projects now have a controller for that. So. Um, for instance, for, in, in, the, in the Argo world, uh, that's Argo rollouts. Um, and I know Flux has Flagger to do uh, some of those things as well. Um, but you have a, another controller, progressive, that is GitOps friendly, right? That is basically saying, hey, given these parameters, right, I want you to start at 10% and increase progressively to 100% um, and until that rollout is successful. Right, and it works with your GitOps controller. What's really cool about uh, using something like Argo Rollouts or, or Flagger is that it's also policy-based with respect to metrics, right? So you can plug into things like uh, Prometheus, right? So like, I know I use Istio a lot, so I use, you know, um, Prometheus. Um, you can tap into Prometheus and just run whatever query you, you want to in order to do the rollout. So now you kind of have like a policy um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? You kind of have like a, a low end, high end sort of thing. I'm like, okay, well, given these parameters, do the rollout for me. And then, then it becomes like automatic, right? And GitOps friendly. And it has things like rollback and, um, um, yeah, so basically like rollback, whereas like you, um, if something goes wrong, Prometheus is catching errors, like 500s or whatever, you're able to do that as well. So, um, so the idea behind using um, something like Istio, Service Mesh, and, um, and GitOps together is like you really want to scale, right? So the idea is scaling. The idea is that, okay, you know, we have, um, you know, you know, organizations are always talking about like, oh, we need, you need to do less with more, we need to scale rapidly, you want to be able to handle anything um, you have, now you have like the tool sets to do it and now you have the tool sets to do it automatically, right? And so we have like things like federated mes mes meshes or multi-cluster, I, I forget, I don't, I don't know what the right term is. So, um, so it's called federated, federated, -cluster. federated message cluster, right? So, um, um, and uh, you know, you manage complexity exponentially, right? So once, um, once you add like another cluster, like an Istio cluster, um, it, the, the problem grows exponentially. No, not just, you know, incrementally. Um, so your apps could be really anywhere, right? And so um, GitOps basically just helps you manage that. Not only manage that complexity, lets you do um, other cool things like uh, progressive delivery um, in a GitOps friendly way, right? And so uh, one of the things, so I have, I don't know if you've seen the back of my shirt, if you wanna see it later, you can. Um, my, <laughs> back of my shirt says, unless it's in Git, it's only a rumor. Another thing I like saying, so that's kind of like one of my catchphrases, well, another thing I like saying is that autom automation does not mean automatic either. So, um, um, you know, everything, basically, that phrase just means that you are ultimately in control of how that rollout happens, is that, but what actually does the rollout is automatic. So that's kind of like what I, what I mean um, from that aspect, right? And then, so um, you saw the, um, the image before, right? 
that kind of how it looks like uh, here, where you know you are not only using uh, the glue uh, glue mesh to help your your federated clusters, right? But now you have like like a um, like a controller there as well to help you with the the GitOps thing. Um, I don't know if you have any. Yeah. So that, that this isn't just theory. We have people, lots of companies in production today implementing these patterns um, very effectively for hundreds of clusters at a time. So it's a proven methodology that large scale companies use on a daily basis and it's very effective and cost efficient. Sweet, sweet, yeah. And, um, and by the way, these slides, I just uploaded them to Sketch. So I, I see you taking pictures, which is fine, but just to let you know, we, uh, we uploaded that there. So um, I guess with that, I did, do we have time for, yeah, we have, have time for um, some questions here, if, if anyone has any questions. Nobody? Anyone? Go back a slide, yes. That is a question, so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll allow it, yes. Oh, there's a question back there. So if you do want to learn more about Istio, um, just raw Istio, or even uh, glue mesh, you can go to academy.solo.io, and we have some self-paced classes, or you can actually take a webinar style class where it's interactive and you can have hands on the technology. Um, so please do come and join us. Um, we do them quite frequently and thank you guys. Yeah. Oh yeah, got a question right here. Yeah, no, so yeah. please. Is question. it on? Yeah. Oh, sorry. So a quick question. We're also using like Istio with Flagger and uh, one interesting set, um, <clears throat> problem we had to solve, I think, is when you have flagger or Argo CD rollout, you have this internal state of the rollout which is managed by flagger. It is GitOps friendly, but you still have um, like failure, you still need to handle failure states and failure conditions. And it can a little, so it goes a little bit in a different direction as a GitOps, so your GitOps repository drift from the source of truth. So you have can have different workload on different version, mm -hmm. deploy it on your, on, 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 your, like, on your system and a different version defined in a GitOps repository. So do you have any like good cookbook solutions to solve it or do you need to approach it yourself like we did, we had like callbacks, automatic rollouts and making sure we change the state inside the repository to reflect it correctly. Yeah, yeah. So. Um... So I don't know for so for Flagger I'm not I'm not sure right so I know for rollouts specifically that um, since it works hand in hand with with Argo CD it'll mark the deployment as degraded um, and so um, meaning that just like just your deployment is just like just degraded so it's no longer like in sync with with Git it's no longer like it, it's basically marking your app as like it's it's not not working right and so um, which I actually talked to someone once, it's like, well, that's not technically true because it rolled it back. So it is healthy, but <laughs> um, technically, but it, it, does, it does show it. I do think though that there's room for improvement um, because to recover for something like that is very, um, very imperative. Um, like right now, even like with Argo rollouts, um, you have to um, um, do some imperative work, right? So like to, to automate that, you may need like another controller. Um, but yeah, with, and, and also mm -hmm. in Glue Mesh, there's a validation web webhook as well uh, that won't allow you to apply configs that are bad. Yeah, uh, and you can set that to strict, and you know you can also use OPA policies to uh, you know check your configs, etc. In tandem with that. Not sure if we answered your question other than like, I agree that like there needs to be a, <laughs> a, a, a better way to handle like either like rollbacks or like um, remediation of, of that. Thank you. Um, just a quick question about the diagram, I guess, and maybe it kind of follows that question about whether things are really GitOps or not. Yeah. But uh, so the top part of the diagram shows glue mesh being synced with Argo CD, I guess being synced with Git, 
those glue mesh CRDs, I guess, being synced with Git. But then there's the arrow about glue mesh creating or, or translating Istio resources in the individual clusters, right? Mm -hmm. Are those Istio resources, does their configuration ever show up in Git, or is it only in the mind of glue mesh, if, if you understand what I mean? Um, it, would be, it would be glue mesh's abstraction of the Istio resources, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and also, it's very similar with Argo rollouts, right? So you see, like, our, so uh, part of Argo rollouts, and um, again, I'm, I'm ignorant on, on Flagger, so I'm not sure if it's the same with Flagger, but with Argo rollouts, um, you're not actually even using a deployment either because you're using the Ar an Argo rollout um, specification, which has the same spec as a deployment. So the, it, is, it is like layers of abstraction because you have a rollout that controls your, um, uh, your replica set versus a deployment. So uh, very similar to, to, like, to like glue, where it's like you're using the glue translation of, you know, glue will then, you know, create those resources. It's all about making the user experience easy and, you know, very readable to, in the end, you know, to reduce human error, to, you know, allow replication easily, et cetera. So, so, if I go, so if I go back to an old version of the glue mesh CRDs, it should put back the ESTO resources I had before. That, so in general, that's the GitOps idea, right? Yes. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Hi, it's pretty much related to the last question. It's about the, the sync or, or the drift detection on the, on the Istio clusters. Because in this case, if I understand, uh, we, synch we are going to synchronize the Glue resources through Argo CD in this case, and Glue Mesh is going to create the, the Istio cluster, right? But if there is some drift on the Istio clusters, like at the global failover or the WAF configuration, wherever, that drift is going to be picked up by the Glue Mesh or the Argo CD sync. The Argo CD will detect that, yeah. the, the drift, right? Um, I'm not sure if there's the, a tool in Glue that detects drift, um, but I, I think... So I, in this case, it would definitely be Argo looking after the resources that have been deployed, et cetera, for changes. Okay, yeah, my, my question was because I, I really don't, I, I haven't used this combination, so I, mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen the, uh, how it looks on, on the Argo CD UI. Yeah, it detects the, yeah, so it, like, the, 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 yeah, so in, just to kind of like pull the, the curtain back a little bit, in Argo CD, um, so I'll, I'll like for, for Istio, I'll, I'm gonna use some Istio um, nomenclature. You have um, uh, like your virtual service, Right, usually you'll have like your virtual service like pointed certain percentages. You actually point at the stable, 100% at the stable release. So like in Git, it's, um, um, it's, it's more of like you're storing like your end state in Git for the virtual service. Now the Argo controller takes care of, sorry, the Argo rollout controller takes care of what points to stable, right? The stable, and I'm using stable in quotes because that's just like, they call it the stable release versus the canary release, right? It's an actual specification. It's actually called that. So, um, but the, um, yeah, so the Argo rollout itself is the one that, you know, looks at what your end state wants to be and then shifts the traffic um, accordingly, right? So it'll, it'll mark individual replica sets as stable versus canary. And you, that's, it kind of, you're kind of giving a lot more um, control over to the rollout controller, right? Versus, um, and, and in Argo, you just have your end state defined, like how, what, what do I want to see as my end state? Yeah, and really GitOps is about, you know, having a process behind it, right? Yeah. Having that gateway into your configuration. So in an ideal world, you would have, you know, checks and balances yeah, before yeah. that drift can even happen. Um, so, just a theoretical question. Doesn't this break the principles of GitOps in that GlueMesh translates the source of truth? Yeah, so it's, uh, this is actually, um, and funnily enough, this is a conversation I had with uh, Christian Posta, uh, <laughs> who's, uh, who's at Solo as, as well. It's, um, it's, so getting into just like the GitOps aspect of it, 
the, its points of demarcation, as I always say, right? Like, because like if you technically think about it, a deployment isn't really your, um, right? Like isn't really what runs, right? It's the pods, right? So is storing pod definitions more GitOps than storing a deployment? Or are you just storing um, what your end state, what your end state wants to be, right? And so it, it's really your points of demarcation, right? Like so, and then there's like a balance between that, right? Do like if you write like um, um, a Kubernetes controller mm. that is like three lines of YAML, but like has a massive deployment, like that's technically GitOps because it's like you just have a, you know, you're just telling the controller what you want to do, or do you store those individual pod YAMLs and the individual service YAMLs, all of that in Git? It's, um, it's something we've actually discussed at the GitOps working group, yeah. right? The, this concept of like soft GitOps and hard GitOps where, and where that point of demarcation is. Where I come, where my, my point of view is like your point of demarcation and where, where the controller lets go of that and mm -hmm. where another controller picks it up, right? And where do you want those to be? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, where I'm coming from is more in terms of repeatability and consistency. So yes, to yes. me, if Gloomish changes in a future release, it might change your end service. Uh, what do you True, mean but that would be the same with Istio in general. Yeah. That yeah. abstraction is needed. I mean, really it comes down to, are people gonna use it, yeah. right? Are they gonna be able to consume it? And in the end, we're trying to make that easier. Cool, we have about two more minutes, so if there's any more questions, comments, concerns. Awesome. Thank you. Cool, thank you everyone. <laughs>